It's possible that this X lineage gene is related to the giants. Tales of legends, beasts, giants, and mighty warriors are usually considered as mere myths, but the remains of this giant Nephilim king recently discovered bring a shocking new perspective, proving beyond reasonable doubt that giants once roamed the earth. There's a lot of buzz and excitement around this discovery, as the Anunnaki Nephilim king was truly an ancient wonder no one believed existed. What is the real story of the Anunnaki Nephilim king? How come giants like these existed and yet there are none today? Join us in this video as we explore the Anunnaki Nephilim King found intact in a tomb and giant skeletons are retrieved for DNA genomes. If there's one thing we all can relate to, it is the mystifying awe we feel about giants, large individuals who seem to be cut out of different materials. Individuals with great height and stature have always been respected or even feared for as long as time began. Today, anyone measuring above 6.7 feet is pretty much considered a giant and gets to play terrifying movie roles or get intimidating bodyguard jobs. The average human today is about 5.9 feet, so these six-foot giants really do make heads turn. However, humans were a lot bigger in the past, and giants were much more mightier than we see today. Giants of the past reached heights of 9 feet or up to 17 feet. A 9-foot giant is mentioned in the Christian Bible, Goliath, the terrifying giant who David killed with nothing but a stone. But aside from Goliath, there are other mentions of giants in several Bible passages. There's even a mention of an entire race of giants called Nephilims. The Nephilims were mysterious beings with abnormally large sizes. They are referenced in Bible books like Genesis, Numbers, Ezekiel, and Hebrews. The name translates to the Fallen Ones. This is because they were the hybrid humans formed from the copulation of fallen angels with human females. Genesis 6, 4 reads, and the Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God went into the daughters of humans, who bore children unto them. These were the heroes of old, warriors of renown. The fact that the Bible calls these beings heroes or warriors makes you wonder if some of the legends of mighty warriors in mythology, like Hercules and Gilgamesh, are Nephilims. If you don't believe in the Bible, there's more proof of the existence of Nephilims. The Book of Enoch is a very famous, mysterious, ancient documentary that explains everything there is to know about Nephilims. This book was written by Enoch, a man who walked so perfectly that he never died but went up to heaven. His books cover his encounters, visions, and revelations about heaven and earth. It describes everything from how the angels, or watchers, fell to how they multiplied and dominated the earth. According to this book, some Nephilims grew up to heights of 450 feet the Nephilims were unstoppable forces that could do whatever they wanted. They influenced and ruled over everyone around them thanks to their sheer size and unmatchable strength. Usually these giants utilized their strengths by fighting in the army. Whenever they did so, they were an unstoppable brute force that almost always assured victory for their troop. Scholars have deduced that many of the giant warriors depicted in the Bible and other ancient texts were descendants of the Nephilims. Some ancient texts describe giants as enemies of the gods. In other words, these giant beings had a habit of revolting against the gods, just like Gilgamesh and Enkidu, since they felt they were powerful enough to rule mankind. Certain giants in mythology were known to engage in fierce battles with the gods of Olympia, and these wars were known as the Gigantomachy. According to the legend, the Gigantomachy was led by Zeus, king of the gods in Greek mythology. During the war, the mighty giants tried to storm Mount Olympus, where Zeus and other elder gods resided, to dethrone them. However, they met fierce resistance from Zeus and the other Olympian gods. In the end, they couldn't stand Zeus's mighty power, as he rained down thunderbolts on them, in addition to other fatal blows from his fellow gods. The leader of the giants, Alcyoneus, was killed alongside most of his mighty warriors. The remaining giants who survived were kept prisoners or exiled to remote locations where they could never disturb humanity again. Researchers believe that these deadly battles may have resulted in the death of these giant races. These myths portray these giants as near-invincible creatures. However, there may have been some exaggeration in the stories, as we've noticed in most epic tales like the Epic of Gilgamesh. 
A shocking discovery that brought life to the myth of Nephilims and giant races was made when a renowned archaeologist named Sir Leonard Woolley embarked on a mission to uncover the ruins of an ancient Mesopotamian city named Ur. Ur is an ancient civilization located in what we now know as Iraq. It was one of the most important cities in the Sumerian civilization, with powerful rulers and wealthy citizens. Sir Leonard Woolley and his team of experts intended to excavate the site to find relics from the lost civilization. Strange enough, the team stumbled upon something shocking, a 6-500-year-old preserved giant skeleton. This was unexpected, given that the site had been unexplored for thousands of years. The team never expected to find a full skeletal framework. At most, they hoped to find one or two bone pieces. These bone remains were found in a floodplain, meaning the individual was buried at a location very prone to periodic flooding. It's not clear why this was so, but it's suggestive of the fact that the people of Ur had strange burial practices and beliefs. The lead archaeologist, Woolley, decided to coat the bones with wax so they don't fall apart during transportation. After that, the skeleton was packed up and shipped in a container to a London museum where extensive equipment was available to provide in-depth study and investigation of the object. Expert analysis showed that the remains belonged to a man who lived to be at least 50 years old and he had died from natural causes. The fact that the entire skeleton remains intact is a sign that this individual was an important person. And so, this begged the question, who was this giant man? Many archaeologists believe this man to be an ancient Anunnaki king. The Anunnaki are ancient figures in Mesopotamian cultures, regarded as deities. According to ancient texts, these beings were direct descendants of An, god of the heavens, and Kai, goddess of the earth. These beings were very powerful and typically influenced the lives of all the humans who lived at that time. Reminds you of the Nephilims, right? Well, this team of archaeologists were overjoyed at their discovery. Finding human remains is one thing, but finding giant remains is another. This discovery was a once-in-a-lifetime discovery. However, something even more profound was unearthed in 2003, an entire collection of Nephilims and a true Nephilim king himself. The team behind this discovery was led by a man named Jorg Fassbinder. They had ventured deep into the Iraq desert to search for anything they could find and they were shocked to find a huge collection of tombs inhabited by giant human-like beings. Searching deeper, the team found giants that had been dead and preserved for millennia and several items and artifacts that were buried with them. It was a mind-blowing discovery. There was an entire landmass that had been buried there. About 10,000 hectares of buried property were uncovered, and according to Jorg Fassbinder, some of the structures found were quite similar to those described in the Epic of Gilgamesh. This prompted many to believe that one of the tombs must have contained the remains of Gilgamesh, an ancient legend whose epic tale has been passed on for generations. The Epic of Gilgamesh is one of the most popular legends and one of the oldest stories in human history. The story follows a protagonist, Gilgamesh, who is a demigod, Gilgamesh was a 17-foot-tall giant born to the king of Uruk and a Mesopotamian goddess. As a prince, he took over the throne after his father's demise. He was a powerful king who did whatever he liked and never listened to the gods or anyone else. Gilgamesh had the power to defeat lions unscathed, and he is said to have single-handedly built the giant walls of Uruk, which sadly have become wreckage today. He was a terrifying being, a literal god among men. He ruled his people with an iron fist. Many hated him and few loved him, but no one dared challenge him because he was stronger than anyone else. The people of Uruk shed tears under the reign of Gilgamesh, so much so that the gods had to step in. Gilgamesh's life was full of feats and adventures, and he ended up having an untamable desire to become immortal after his best friend Enkidu died at the hands of the gods. Enkidu was a wild, beast-like man created by the gods to tame Gilgamesh due to his tyranny. The gods made him the perfect rival, strength for strength, to Gilgamesh. The first encounter between Gilgamesh and Enkidu was epic. Enkidu had challenged Gilgamesh to a contest, and these two godlike men battled for days. Finally, Gilgamesh managed to pin his opponent to the ground. But he didn't kill him. Rather, he was impressed and made Enkidu his friend. The friendship grew so strong that the two men became inseparable. They would combine their strength and embark on several adventures together. Enkidu, originally created to destroy Gilgamesh, became an ally, and together the men were unstoppable. 
The gods were angered at this, and they sent many threats, many assassins, to take out the two men, but their combined power was just too great to be stopped. They embarked on endless quests and fought so many battles. It was after one such quest in the remote forest that the gods became angry and decided to kill Enkidu. The two demigods had set out to conquer the beast Humbaba, the guardian of the sacred cedar forest. Enkidu and Gilgamesh slew the beast with their combined power, increasing their fame. This angered the gods, so they sent a divine bull to destroy Gilgamesh. But with Enkidu's help once again, the beast was vanquished, and Enkidu even hurled the corpse at the gods as a sign of disrespect. This made the gods so angry that they struck Enkidu dead. Losing his best friend hurt Gilgamesh so much, and it sparked a desire in him to become immortal like the gods. This desire drove him to the far ends of the earth in search of the one man who had gained immortality, Utnapishtim. After pitying Gilgamesh, Utnapishtim gave him a flower that could make him young again. But on his way home, Gilgamesh lost the flower, ruining his chances at immortality. Sad, broken, and realizing it was all a waste of time, Gilgamesh returned home to enjoy his remaining days on earth. His quest humbled him and made him a changed man. He died and was buried somewhere around River Euphrates. Just so you know, Uruk is now present-day Warka in Iraq. The tale of Gilgamesh was originally written in Akkadian. For many years, this story was believed to be nothing but folklore. However, this discovery changed things. Several agencies involved in archaeological findings covered the Yorg Fassbinder discovery. Although there was a chance that one of the giant remains found could have belonged to Gilgamesh, there wasn't enough evidence to prove it. However, the location of the remains tally beyond all reasonable doubt. You see, the grave was found close to the now dried up river Euphrates, and the Epic of Gilgamesh states that Gilgamesh was buried under the Euphrates River. There were also several Babylonian houses scattered around the location, which had been buried underground for thousands of years. It took a while before whistleblowers from top government agencies finally revealed that what Jorg Fassbinder uncovered was actually the lost tomb of Gilgamesh. However, experts have concluded that the suggested height of 17 feet may have been a huge exaggeration. Gilgamesh's story wasn't written when he was alive, but after he died. Also, the story is a collection from different sources, not to mention that it had to be translated from its original language into English for the whole world to enjoy it. Several errors may have crept into the tale in the process, which explains why the giant remains discovered by Yord Fassbinder never measured up to 17 feet. In fact, the team didn't get a chance to take the actual measurements because the Iraq War broke out soon after their discovery, bringing chaos. The similarities Gilgamesh shares with this newly discovered Anunnaki king go beyond size alone. Even the cities are quite similar. Ur and Uruk are sister states. Uruk was the larger and older state, founded around 4,500 BC. Ur was a younger state created around 3,800 BC and situated near the Persian Gulf. So, the epic life of Gilgamesh must have preceded that of this Anunnaki Nephilim king. Also, in the Epic of Gilgamesh, the Anunnaki were mentioned as the seven judges of the underworld. These beings had strong powers even over the elements of nature. It's unclear why or what made these beings disappear, but certain conspiracy theories have been put in to explain their existence and extinction. One such theory was put forth by an author named Zechariah Sitchin. In his 1976 book, The Twelfth Planet, the writer claimed that the Anunnaki were an advanced humanoid species from outer space, from an undiscovered planet called Nibiru. They came to Earth around 500,000 years ago and set up a base for gold mining because Earth was rich in these metals. These beings also intermingled with humans, hybridizing our species so we could become vulnerable to them. However, they were forced to leave our planet's surface to reside in orbit due to the melting of the Antarctic glaciers. This record from Sitchin hasn't been scientifically proven, but it hasn't been disputed either. Sitchin equally mentioned that the Anunnaki were the ones who built the pyramids of Egypt. Considering the fact that the pyramids have fascinated mankind for millennia, there's a good chance that this point may be true. No ancient human technology could create massive structures like the pyramids. Surely they're the works of giants possessing advanced extraterrestrial technology. However, in any case, one thing stands clear. The Anunnaki and Nephilims were a unique race and shared so many similarities. Considering the exaggeration most folklores employ, these titles may have referred to the same race of giants.
The story of Nephilims depicted in the Bible and the Book of Enoch bears quite a strong similarity with that of Gilgamesh. Also, there are versions of the story that portray Utnapishtim as a man who the gods commissioned to create a massive ship called the Preserver of Life. This boat was the vessel that aided Utnapishtim's survival in a deadly flood. This resembles the story of Noah in the Bible, the man God gave the order to build the ark just before he sent a flood to wipe out the world. Noah was the only righteous man at the time, so he alone survived the flood. And so what if Gilgamesh's story and the Bibles are telling us about the same person? While most folklore portrays giants as supernatural beings, Bible stories like the one of David and Goliath only present giants as magnificent humans with great heights, stature, and strength. Usually these giants had six fingers and six toes. Several tales in the Christian Bible show where ordinary men who were skilled in warfare killed such giants. And so, what if Gilgamesh was simply another one of such giants? Going by the Bible's history, the flood must have been the very thing that destroyed the Nephilims, ending the race of giants. Noah's Ark contained only him, his family, and a duo of all the species on Earth. But still, even after this cataclysmic event, we see giants like Goliath surface in later chapters of the Bible. And it makes you wonder, did the fallen angels return once again to have sexual relationships with women after the flood? Or is there another reason why these giant races resurrected? So you see, there are many puzzles when it comes to giant beings like Nephilims and Anunnaki, and no one historical book or story solves these puzzles. However, at least with the discovery of several giant corpses, we can be sure that there's some truth in these epic tales and folklore. Thanks to Yord Fassbinder, humanity can now be sure that the Nephilim king, Gilgamesh, was real. But then, you may wonder, what happened to the bones of Gilgamesh and other discovered giant remains? And why hasn't this discovery been made viral like it should since 2003? The answer, it's the United States government. The war in Iraq is one of the most notable wars in our 21st century. And though the governments have highlighted many reasons why this war stretched on the way it did, there's more to it than meets the eye. You see, the war in Iraq started barely a month after Yord Fassbinder discovered the tomb of Gilgamesh. This has led some experts to affirm that the U.S. government had a secret mission to steal or recover Gilgamesh's remains right from the start. The sudden breakout of the war forced Fassbinder and his team to retreat, so they couldn't even carry out carbon dating and other experiments on the remains. They fled the country right after the war broke out. It all gets more suspicious when you consider the fact that the supposed reason why the U.S. government triggered a war in the first place turned out to be false. George Bush, who seems to have started the whole thing, later admitted that Iraq had nothing to do with the attack on the World Trade Center, as many assumed. Rather, the government was simply taking down a threat before it materialized. But what threat, really? Some say the attack was to stop Iraq from developing nuclear weapons, but even this has been debunked. Shockingly, a truth has just been revealed by a whistleblower, a hidden message sent directly to Hillary Clinton. The message requested documentation regarding the resurrection chamber of Gilgamesh and the location of his body. So maybe the entire story about Iraq developing a nuclear bomb was just a cover-up. What's even more suspicious is that eyewitnesses reported that the first thing the military did when they invaded Iraq was to set up an encampment around the tomb of Gilgamesh. They chased the locals and reporters away and began excavating items from the site and moving them to an undisclosed location. Even more, the entire story of Gilgamesh's grave discovery was wiped off the internet like it never happened. Did the US government want to lay their hands on Nephilim DNA? Certainly, it would be possible, given that recent court hearings by the U.S. Congress have revealed how the government has been involved in the recovery and experimentation of alien DNA for several decades. Perhaps they equally wanted to lay their hands on angelic Nephilim DNA. For now, there's no proof to any of these claims, but the stories and allegations are adding up slowly, and it may only be a matter of time before all is revealed. Thank you for watching another episode of Voyager. While you are still here, click on the video on your screen to see more mind-blowing videos like this one.